All right, we have just gotten the judgment and uh, the decision by the second deputy of the National Assembly has been quashed. That's the decision to declare the seats of the nine members of parliament vacant. So they are going back to parliament. We have succeeded in that the court has held that what he did was ultra-bias the powers that he ordinarily has. Because as you may have noted in our arguments, we stated very clearly, the persons that were alleged to have been uh, expelled were not expelled as of the time that they were reported to expelled. And at that time when he was reading that paper, he was aware that the matter was active in court, that he went ahead and, uh, and passed that ruling. He was also aware that he had no jurisdiction, no power to deal with such a matter. It having been considered by the parties and uh, those that reportedly expelled, having said that we have not expelled, he had no jurisdiction to come up with his own uh, decision, to replace the decision of the, of the party with his own. And uh, for that reason, the court has decided that he acted out of bias and the MPs should be able to go back to parliament. Yes, um, the other part is um, Parliament, the, the business of Parliament is regulated by standing orders. And the standing orders are derived from Article 77 of the Constitution. So you would note that on the day that um, uh, Speaker Moyo declared the seat vacant, that particular announcement was not on the order paper as required by standing orders. So the new standing orders are such that when you have a ruling, the speaker has a ruling, uh, that particular matter must come on the order paper two hours before commencement of business. So Speaker Moyo went, to went on to declare the seat vacant and later adjusted the standing orders around 17 hours, two hours later. Now, we have seen this uh, uh, trend uh, by presiding officers to go against um, uh, standing orders. Uh, it was just last week that um, Honorable Andeleki rose on a point of order, uh, you know, uh, referring to a Concord judgment. Firstly, he did not cite the standing order as required by standing orders themselves. And uh, secondly, the matters that he referred to were in the courts of law. It's a settled practice of parliamentary business, but when a matter is in court, it shall not be debated on the floor of the House. You remember that uh, last year, in November, around November 4th, Honorable Chitotela rose on a point of order against Honorable Mao Sand, and the Speaker was very categorical. The Speaker said she could not come because the matters were before court. So you have um, presiding officers with a selective manner in which they award uh, points of order, in which they make rulings on points of order. It's indeed a source of concern. On one hand, they can receive a letter and read it. When another letter comes, depending on who delivered the letter, they begin to give excuses. So what we expect, especially after this ruling, is that parliament must begin to function properly. Mm. Members of parliament must go to parliament uh, uh, and be able to represent the people that sent them to parliament as provided for under the constitution. So it starts with the presiding officers. Presiding officers must follow the standing orders to the latter. They do not expect parliament to function smoothly when they themselves go against the rules. So when we have said time and again that uh, the parliament has now become an appendage of the executive, that's exactly what we mean. And we hope that uh, with such a ruling you know, coming from our courts, we can begin to have a parliament that is objective, a parliament that will allow parliamentary democracy so that members of parliament go there and represent their people. Thank you. Yeah. The, with that explanation, the only thing I can say is that uh, today also, uh, we have an opportunity to demonstrate to Zambian people that internal issues that we are dealing with are ours. We are able to resolve and we have the capacity to resolve. So we are standing together 
with our good brother on Obama Osampa uh, on this matter because the issues that have to do with him and ourselves are internal issues which we are going to resolve in the interest of the Zambian people and therefore would not want that anybody begin to meddle into our internal issues and want to make an issue for themselves. We can only assure the Zambian people that ultimately decisions will be made within patriotic front that will serve the interests of the Zambian people so that we will be able to serve them in view of what is going on in this country. Thank you very much. Well, my brothers have said, I think in, in a village um, where there's a family in a homestead, when there are disagreements, it's an issue of a homestead, a village. So when an outside village comes into matters that are internal, at that point we we'll all unite to fend off the outsiders. After that, then we can look at our own internal issues. It was never in a family if you fight with brothers and sisters it's only not anyone's intention for that brother or sister to die because taking the MPs out of parliament is as good as killing them and and also it's not in the good interest of Zambia uh, there's issues of constitution uh, so for me you know the background we we pardon them the internal matter when it got to a point where it was going to affect their seats I pardon them in writing which was ignored by Speaker Moyo. How do you, uh, the people who are fighting have pardoned each other. How do you disagree and go ahead and met out the punishment? So this ruling here is cardinal momentous and it sets the tone uh, at Parliament there. Earlier on, we were at the Constitutional Court where I verbally applied to join in also and I've been asked to put it in writing through the lawyers. So I'll join in on my part whatever I can do to ensure that my nine, my colleagues, the nine MPs do not leave the house, I'll do that. If it means me leaving the house, they stay, I'll do that. It's not about uh, me or them, it's about Zambia. It's not in anyone's interest for any MP to lose a seat and we go to buy election when the nation has no money. Everywhere payments are delayed. Everywhere uh, the government is not meeting its uh, payments when it's due. So if a by-election is called, that's like 100 million quachas that will go in a by-election. So for the good of the nation, there should be no by-election coming out of uh, the nine MPs or any other. After all, 2026 is nearby. Let's leave everything in the hands of the people. And if it's the constitution they want to change, they don't need to send the nine MPs. We have volunteer MPs that are rushing to them. They should take advantage of them and use them for their numbers. For us, uh, we we'll leave that to the Zambian people. But the nine MPs, they shouldn't use our internal disagreements. Umuto Walupata Witika. The time we unite, they will be disappointed. So they can take advantage of those they are dangling carrots and running to them. Uh, but for this case, here it's being resolved. And we thank the judiciary for standing firm. And as my colleagues have said, we are happy with this ruling. And the independent court, I'll play my part if needed to ensure that the nine don't go uh, because we pardon them. The rest remains internal matter to deal with. Thank you so Thank much. Honorable. Yes, good afternoon, colleagues. Um, for me, um, I want to start by thanking God, first of all, for preserving my life. As you all know, I was involved in. Uh, road traffic accident on Sunday as I was going to church um, and so um, I'm, I'm recovering and I'm feeling better and for the people out there be assured that um, I'm recovering better and I'm well. Um, as for what has happened today, uh, Honorable uh, colleagues, uh, SG, um, I want to start by thanking our legal team. Honorable Makebi, uh, Comrade Chapa standing next to me here, who have been with us through uh, this matter. And um, we recognize that in as much as we have numerous challenges in the judiciary, we still have hope that the doctrine of separation of powers can still be demonstrated through the judgments that we have gotten. And so we expect, like my colleague spoke earlier, 
that the legislative arm of government must never, ever veer off their portfolio functions and stray into the judiciary. And either way, we expect that the judiciary should function without interference. To my fellow colleagues, uh, the, the, the nine members, we have got a solemn duty to stand and speak for the Zambian people who are troubled, who are going through so many difficulties. Those who have opted to work in all people's challenges and want to dine with um, the, 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 our colleagues in the executive, let them be. But I want to assure the people of Zambia that here, now that we have been boosted, we will stand and speak for them and make sure that they get the life they deserve from the government. So I thought I could just add uh, that little voice. And I want to assure the general membership of the Patriot Front that we are going to ensure that we resolve our matters and make sure that we save them as the formidable opposition political party, which is um, a, undoubtedly known by the Zambians. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You will see maturity in dealing with matters, regardless of the challenge. We'll deal with that. Okay. 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 Okay.